Latest figures released this morning have revealed that food prices have increased by nearly 15%. Of course, this adds to the ongoing cost of living crisis. Well, this January, we thought we'd help and our Saver Squad experts are teaming up. The Financial Times consumer editor Claire Barrett, money mum Gemma Bird and property expert Scarlett Douglas are going to be on hand with loads and loads of really simple money saving tips that really work. Well, Claire and Gemma join me now and I guess this is the perfect time. It's the new year. Sort out your finances and clear, get organised. Exactly. So yeah. it's the time to focus and we all really need to with bills changing, rising, pay rises happening, the state pension changing in April. So we've got to be ready, but also we've got to have the right mindset to deal with this change. And lots of us have got money on our minds all the time for the wrong reasons. But try and think about things more positively and engage with your finances for, for the right reason. Now, you might have a goal that you're going to focus on, like saving up money or maybe getting a new job or a, or a pay rise. But, you know, try and embrace some of that posit positivity. There's yeah. lots of talk on TikTok about money mantras and manifesting money. A lot of it is nonsense. But there is something to be said for that positive reinforcement nice. and saying that you want to do things differently. Just saying, like, I can do it with money. No, exactly. And having the confidence to yeah. sort it all out. I totally agree. And I also think a really good idea is, you know, work out what you're earning per hour, OK? So if, for example, you know you're going to do a job and you know at the end of it after you've paid your tax and your national insurance you're taking home 10 pounds an hour that's taken you a whole hour to earn that money why should you just give it away willy-nilly and i think it, when you've got that mindset it's a bit like going to the gym Lorraine. Right? you know like right. when you go to the gym and you run for an hour not that i ever do that but if i did <laughs> and you run for an hour and you come back you then won't go and eat that chocolate bar because you think that has taken me an hour to burn 335 yes. calories. It's the same with money. It's having the mindset of that's taken me that long to earn it. I'm just going to give it away. You know, yeah, exactly, exactly. I guess it's kind of almost that like you have to be your own chancellor yeah. and do your own budget. You know, actually sit down and do it properly. And But what's the best way to start doing that? Yeah, I was going to say, I think we can do a better job than, than the blokes have done. <laughs> so this is a really quick tip. I've made an Instagram reel about it. Piece of A4 paper. Yes. Three folds, 12 sections. Make yourself a money roadmap um, for, the, for the year ahead. So just think about things month by month. When have you got big lumps of expenditure, like birthdays, holidays? When do payments need to be made? When might bills change? When does your state pension go up? When, if you're a homeowner, does your mortgage fix end? Because you need to be prepared and plan ahead. Right. Things like car insurance, home insurance. If you do that a month ahead, you'll save money. Now, just a simple little thing like this to help you keep on track with your budgeting and help you look ahead... Just throughout the year, you can update it, you can put amounts sure. of money on there that you've saved, adapt it however you want, use coloured pens, stickers, <laughs> I love a bit of stationery. Yeah, or just, or do, you can do it online if you're good at that. You can, you can do spreadsheets and all the rest of it. Yes. But actually, there's something about writing something down on a bit of paper. <laughs> I know it's a bit retro, but it, yeah. it does kind of fix it in your mind. It just lets you know where yeah, you are with yeah. your money and then you can build on that with other budgeting. Mm. Yeah, and I think you made a really good point there. You know, great, use spreadsheets, use computers, do whatever works for you. There's yeah. no right or wrong with this as well. But also look at your patterns, your spending patterns. Are you going and grabbing that coffee every day on the way to work? Are you buying a takeaway once a week, once a month? Now, there's nothing wrong with that. But if you're looking at cutting back or, you know, you need to cut back, then that's when you need to look at it. And look at cancelling subscriptions. Look at cancelling. And also look at getting subscriptions that you may use if you're buying something regularly then you probably need a subscription for that and lose that one it's so shocking when people go through their bank statements it's looking at patterns and working out you know all oh, right i'm really guilty of this i need to cut right. back on buying lipsticks every week when i've got a thousand in the drawer sort of thing ah uh, exactly yeah. you're right and um, as far as saving up though yeah is that something we should be doing I'm a big believer in this, but only if you're not in debt and you want to save okay. and, and you, you really enjoy saving. And it's looking at sort of next year. You know, Christmas is a really expensive time. We've just come out of it. I think everyone feels the pinch, especially in January. So a really good idea is the penny challenge. Now, it's really simple, Lorraine. Um, if you want to start saving, on the 1st of January, you yes. save a penny. On the 2nd of January, you save 2p. On the 3rd of January, you save 3p and so on. And by the end of the year, you'd have saved £667.97. Pounds and 97 pence. I forgot just the pence by, then. Just by, just by adding that penny every single day. And a lot of people do it in reverse. So they'll save the bit at the end of the year in January right. because they don't want the cost coming out at Christmas. So whatever works oh. for you, you can put it away weekly, monthly. You know, there's, right. I always say there's no right or wrong. If that isn't enough for you, sure. do 2p a day. You know, yeah. It's about adapting to so what's right kind of that for you. Thing is if you, you quit smoking, which is obviously going to save you an awful lot of yeah. money, um, and then you put that in a wee jar, and then you think, 
I've got a holiday. <laughs> All of a yeah, sudden, yeah. you know, just be, just money the money that you save, you, you know, you, you, you money that you're not spending on the fags, you just put in, just yeah. put in there, which is which is brilliant. Now, Claire, what about pensions? Yes. Is this a good time to be checking up, sort of like doing a bit of sort of housekeeping in Absolutely. that way? Absolutely. So two things for people to check. If you're doing a dry January, staying at home, not going out spending money, some free things you can do online, especially if you're a woman who maybe has had years out of work where you haven't been getting child benefit because you could have a missing year of national insurance contributions. Now, when you get to state pension age, you'll only get the full state pension if you've got 35 years of contributions. But you can go online. There's a really good free government website on gov.uk where you can see if you've got any gaps. And at the moment, you can pay around £800 a year to fill a missing year. But if you do that, it means that you'll get more state pension every year of right. your life when you retire. So that £800 investment could bring you thousands in year to yeah. come. But the rules change in April and you can only fill gaps going back six years from then. So really important to look now before April. It's, you know, it's a bit of money, but it could be, it could be wise. Oh, absolutely. And then also while you're there, there's another government page to look for lost company pensions. Now, like every single job that you have, your employer will be paying into a pension for you if you earn more than £10,000. But people forget that, that mm. they have them, they move house, they move on. Billions of pounds is sitting there in pensions. It doesn't just happen to old people, it can happen to young people, yeah. anyone, anyone yeah. who's got a job. But you need to find those and get the money back in your control working for you. Nice. A couple of minutes online could bring all of that back to wow. you. Fantastic. Listen, thank you both. I know you're going to be back. I know uh, Scarlett's got some great things for us too. But for the moment, thank you. Um, everybody, be your own Chancellor. That's <laughs> what I'm going to say to you, because you can probably do a better job than anyone else. We'll get a red briefcase. <laughs> <laughs>